Welcome to CCN Midday News. I'm your host, Captivating Krishna. Here are some of your top stories for the 18th of May. High school senior makes history with a 5.6 GPA, becoming the first black valedictorian at his high school. Obama reminds us what a U.S. president should sound like. Trump says that the U.S. could cut off their whole relationship with China as tensions escalate during this pandemic. Trump also outs his State Department watchdog. And the cop isn't fired for joking about Sean Reed's closed casket after killing him. An unarmed black man killed by a driver who became upset after the minor car accident. Also, new texts are revealed revealed, excuse me, in the Amon Arbery case raises concern and more questions about the Glynn County Police Department. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio says that police will no longer enforce mass wearing orders. Let's get to the news. Timmy Adelacoon, a senior from the South Broward High School in Hollywood, Florida, has made history for being the school's first black valedictorian for having a 5.6 GPA, the highest ever in the school's history. Adela Kuhn shared that his grades have always been outstanding and that he is thankful for his schools uh, that helped him keep it up. He took advantage of the school's American College of Education programs that allowed students to receive college credits while in high school, AP courses, and Broward College courses as well. He said, and I quote, I've been taking over 20 college course worth credits and because of that my AP credits are ACE credits and my dual enrollment credits boost my GPA he said. Aside from his academic achievements he has also made time to enjoy his passion for theater. He is a member of the drama club and the the Thespian uh, Honor Society where he has been doing shows and competitions. He wanted to do both, even in college. Adela Kuhn has been accepted into eight universities, including the University of Miami, Columbia University, Juilliard, UCLA, and the University of Southern California, Berkeley, and the University of Chicago, to name a few. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, however, he wasn't able to tour the schools, so he had to decide which college to go to from his home. He's decided to attend Pomona College. The school gave him a full scholarship, so he has decided to go there. He is uh, planning to double major in molecular biology and theater. The former President Barack Obama delivered two online commitment addresses on Saturday that did more than offer words of inspiration to graduates. He reminded us of what a U.S. president should sound like. In these two speeches, one of those graduating from high school and the other to those graduating from historically black colleges and universities, otherwise known as HBCUs. He urged people to be selfless, to work together to help those in need, and to reject divisiveness. What a contrast to Donald Trump's almost daily message of pitting Americans against each other, his lack of empathy, and his trademark philosophy of it's all about me. Comparing Obama to Trump, though, is unfair on so many levels. Obama is everything Trump will never be. Compassionate, thoughtful, intelligent, intellectually curious, honest, and highly intelligent. Obama's commencement speeches simply reminded us of that very fact. For starters, Obama didn't make his address about himself or his grievances. He focused on the gradu- he focused on those graduating. 
And what a contrast to Trump's 2017 commencement address at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy where he told the graduates, look at the way I've been treated lately, especially by the media. No politician in history, and I said this was great surety, has been treated worse or more unfairly to Trump every day. Even your graduation day is about Trump. President Donald Trump said that the U.S. could take extraordinary steps to ending its relationship with one of the nation's top trading partners as tensions mount between Washington and Beijing amidst the pandemic. There are many things we could do, he said. We could cut off our whole relationship, Trump said in an interview with Fox Business that aired on Thursday. Now, if you did, what would happen? We'd save $500 billion if we cut off our whole relationship. The president may have been referring to a five. billion hundred and fifty seven billion dollars in imports from china back in 2018 he also said that he was upset with the country for falling or failing excuse me to contain the virus which originated in the chinese city of wuhan such a step would likely inflict drastic damage to the U.S. economy, which relies on a significant amount of trade with China. In recent weeks, Trump has railed against China for its management of the outbreak and ratchet up on his criticism. He said on Wednesday that Beijing could have put a stop to the pandemic. Other Republicans have echoed Trump's combative rhetoric as well. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina has said in April that the U.S. should make China pay big time. The administration, however, is weighing several proposals to push China by demanding financial compensation or stripping the country of its sovereignty immunity to enable lawsuits from the U.S. government and others. President Donald Trump has removed the State Department Inspector General Steve Lenick and replaced him with an ally of Vice President Mike Pence, the latest in a series of moves against the independent government watchdogs in recent months. Trump has informed Congress of his intent to out Lenick, a Justice Department veteran appointed to the role back in 2013 by then-President Barack Obama in a letter to the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Friday night. Trump's move has infuriated Democrats who say he's trying to circumvent oversight of his administration, undermining the ability of other branches to hold him accountable. The move follows Trump's anger at being impeached, but it also comes as the White House struggles to combat the coronavirus pandemic just months before the presidential election. One of the Indianapolis police officers involved in the apparent killing of an unarmed black man was not fired and instead given a slap on the wrist for cracking a joke about the shooting moments after it happened. Dejon Sean Reed was live streaming himself fleeing from the police when the 21-year-old military veteran was shot from behind on the 6th of May in Indianapolis. Unbeknownst to the officers in pursuit, the video was still recording when they approached Reed's dead body. One of them could be heard joking and mocking Reed's appearance after shooting him by saying that he was going to have a closed casket funeral. The actual quote was, it looks like it's going to be a closed casket, homie. The Indianapolis Metro Police Department told the Daily Beast on Thursday that the detective had been suspended for a numerous days and had been reassigned to another unit. However, the department declined to identify him or give any more details about the suspension 
over what was called an ongoing investigation and for the and for safety purposes there was immediate some suspicion about the cops story following the shooting the combination of yet more violence against black people by the police department dogged by accusations of racism along with officers mocking the deaf prompted a chant murder 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 during a protest we need to see somebody go to prison protesters are repeated in unison Police said Reed had a gun, but there was no evidence of one even existing. Anthony J. Trifoletti, a 24-year-old white male from Minnesota, is facing murder charges for fatally shooting Douglas C. Lewis, a 29-year-old unarmed black man, following a apparent roadside altercation caused by a minor car accident. According to reports, the incident happened on the highway in the St. Paul, Minnesota, when Trifoletti's car was accidentally bumped from behind by Lewis's car. Both men went out of their cars and had a confrontation before leaving. A few minutes later, both men had another altercation or confrontation where Trifoletti reportedly pulled out his gun and shot Lewis four times at close range before fleeing the scene. Lewis was taken to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead during surgery. Trifoletti turned himself in later that day of the incident. He claimed that he was in fear for his life and told police that he thought Lewis was reaching for a gun when he came towards him. The police, however, confirmed that Lewis was unarmed at the time. However, Lewis's grieving family believes that Trifoletti shot Lewis because he is black. In a tweet from a person who identifies Trifoletti as well, Lewis as my kid's father, there was a screenshot of a private message saying Trifoletti is afraid of the black community and that he and that, excuse me, and that the incident is a race case 1000%. White people can get away with killing black men by saying they were afraid, Lewis's sister uh, told the apparent news. Trifoletti is being held on the bail, which initially was at a million dollars, but eventually was lowered to $500,000 with certain conditions and $750,000. Uh, without conditions. Stay tuned for details on that story. New Texas revealed that the Glen County Police recommended that the owner of the property at the center of the Ahmad Aubrey shooting contact Greg McMichaels whenever he got action on his camera. The 64-year-old Greg McMichaels and his son, 34-year-old Travis McMichaels, were charged with felony murder and aggravated assault recently after the release of video footage that shows the two men ambushing the 25-year-old Arbery and fatally shooting him in February. On the day that Arbery was murdered, one of McMichaels' called 911 to say Arbery had been running by a property under construction that is owned by Larry English. The property had a motion activated camera system that had picked up an unknown people going onto the site and English often called the police and text the video to them according to reports from the Atlanta uh, Journal Constitution. After one of those episodes on December 17th, English received a text message reply a few days later from the Glen County officer alerting him that McMichaels lived nearby and had offered help. Greg is a retired law enforcement and also a retired investigator from the DA's office. Officer 
Robert Rash text on December 20th, offering McMichael's phone number. He said, please call him day or night when you get action on your camera. Both the Glen County Police Department and the Brunswick District Attorney's Office had been under a spotlight for initially declining to arrest or file charges against the McMichaels despite having video footage of the Arbery being pursued and then shot by the two white men. The elder McMichael used to work for both departments before his retirement. However, the lawyer representing the property owner told the AJC, the AJC, excuse me, that English never enlisted McMichael's help and did not call the police on the day Arbery was murdered, not far from the construction site. English had told the police nothing was ever taken from the property records show. English never enlisted Greg McMichael's help. English was two hours away tending to a beehive near his home in Coffee County the day of the fatal shooting. Surely there's a reasonable medium between brutalizing black people for not properly adhering to the COVID-19 related measures and courteously handing out masks to white people who have decided not observing the social distancing rules. The NYPD hasn't seemed to have found that medium yet, but the New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is now suggesting that they will on Friday be announcing that the police in the city will no longer be enforcing the order for people to wear masks. Morning, the NYPD social distancing enforcement efforts aren't working. Overnight, a video surfacing showing a rough arrest of a young mother with her child in her hands. Police say it happened before noon Wednesday at the Atlantic Avenue Barclays Center Station. Officers stopping her from going into the subway with her child because she wasn't wearing her mask properly. What followed was this. <laughs> The woman identified as 22-year-old Kalima Rosier, yelling at the cops to get away from her. As they tried to escort her out of the station, things got physical. That's too much, man. To say the least, whatever else was going on uh, in that video, whatever else was happening in that moment, we should never have a situation where a mom with her child ends up under arrest for that kind of offense. Police say the arrest was justified. They say she hit a cop when they attempted to grab her to put her in handcuffs. She was charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest and harassment, and giving a death's appearance ticket. Police commissioner. Despite Bill de Blasio's criticism and black people's exhaustion of viral videos of being treated less than human, the NYPD says that their officers acted appropriately with respect in arresting the woman in front of her child. NBC News reported. And once again, thank you for watching CCN Midday News. Hope you enjoy. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification button so you will never miss another news update. Have a great day. Peace.